Hello, you little after buzzers. My name's Lauren LaGrasso, and I'm here with a phenomenal woman. Her name is Heather Storm. She is an actor, host, and an eco-entrepreneur. So stay tuned to find out all about that and more. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Yes. I like this. I do too, and I like Heather Storm, who is with us. Heather, tell us about this song. It's Gary Clark Jr. Yeah, I was introduced to him. Um, we did a private event um, when he introduced his music through Warner Brothers right before his album was released, and I got to have this intimate concert and watch Gary Clark Jr. perform, and it was amazing. I instantly fell in love, and I was like, this guy is awesome. Cool. His voice is very sexual, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't already burning from the lack of air conditioning, I would be feeling warm right now. Yeah. Um, Heather, we're so lucky to have you with us today. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> we've got so much to talk about. So as we said, you're an actor, host, and eco-entrepreneur. Tell us a little bit about what that means, eco-entrepreneur. Well, um, I studied environmental science, and the environment is really important to me as an environmentalist, but I think it goes beyond that as far as what I do, because I really like to create things, and so starting businesses that have the environment in mind. So I own an event company called Black Lab Ventures. It's an event and brand consulting company, specifically in the beverage industry. Mm. And um, we're all about being eco-friendly, and we were the first event company to really say, you know what? events create a lot of trash hmm. and so I recognize that and I was like this is a problem yeah we all want to party we want to have fun but they create a lot of trash can we use more environmentally friendly cups and plasticware and can we use organic produce and can we use these fun events to actually be giving back a little bit to the environment at least considering it mm -hmm. rather than just saying we don't care and just creating all this trash and, and not caring so. that is so cool yeah what a brilliant uh, way of thinking and so what kind of companies have you been helping plan events for recently Recently. Oh my goodness. Um, we do a lot of corporate companies, Google, Yahoo, Snapchat, um, the Zoe Report, um, Shinola, which a lot of stores. Like yeah, Shinola stores. Detroit. Yes, I'm from yes. Detroit. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we do all of their sto uh, store events that they have here in Los Angeles and Venice wow. when they have a grand opening. I'm they so have proud a Silver Lake. Yeah, I know. They've been really doing well. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that, you know, people who understand that they want to elevate the event experience for their hmm. consumers. Um, um, we also do a lot of celebrity weddings as well, mm. um, which I can't say names on those, but those are just a whole Any other hints? level. <laughs> um, yeah, Saved by the Bell, some of our favorite Ooh. people from there. Oh. Yeah, so we've just, you know, we've had fun things where we got to be good at little kids about it too and be like, oh my God, this is really cool. We used to watch them on TV and now oh. we're doing their wedding. Um, so things like that. And it's been, you know, people really appreciate the elevated quality that we bring and the caring about the environment. So we're just not, you know, it, it's, a, it's a whole different type of idea behind events, which I'm really proud of. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this because I wouldn't have ever really thought about all of the non-resourceful components of a big event. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the strategies that you guys implement in these events that really you can combat some of this lack of environmental. Right. Well, the first thing is, um, you know, when you're at a bar and you just have the trash cans beside, there just is one trash can. The bottles go in there, the cups go in there, everything goes in there. Now, I, I will admit, it is very hard to get drunk people to segregate their trash. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great drop. Yeah. But it's hard to get drunk people to segregate their trash. I say that every day. You know? <laughs> Put it in the lexicon, folks. <laughs> like, big signs, recycling yeah. only. Your cups go here. The napkins and the food yeah. waste goes over here. So one-time segregation is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in, that, in that situation, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, you know, some of the things that we think about. And instead of when we make our fresh cocktail mix, so we have a commercial kitchen and we use organic produce, which is important because then we're supporting hmm. the small farmers as well instead of big agriculture. So oh, we're giving good. back to the small businesses. And being a small business myself, I realize how important that is. Yeah. Because it's tough to be a small business and and you don't get a lot of support out there unless you're just supporting each other so that's a really big component of it in general that just keeps it very large like buy buy organic um, support the eco-friendly materials we'll use um, corn based cups that are decomposable mm -hmm. um, eco-friendly plasticware or, or bamboo made from bamboo if there's catering and things like that and then one of the big parts is we make fresh organic cocktail mix called nature's buzz and, and <laughs> yeah 
yes, <laughs> get a little buzz from nature, and that's fun. And we use it all organic, but then the big part is we don't put it in plastic containers, we put it in glass. And we take those glass back if people are willing to give it back to us, and we reuse it. Wow. So uh. it, it actually costs a little bit more for us to do that. It's a little bit more work, but in my opinion, it's something that's important. Because you can make this, you know, planet last longer. So exactly. that's really important. Yeah. Plastic is a huge problem. You know, it's it's from petroleum products and a lot of it ends up in the ocean. And in you. And in you. And it's just, yeah, if it gets hot, then mm -hmm. it leaks into the fluid that it's containing. Wow. And there's just a lot of issues with it. So, you know, it, it's worth the sacrifice to cost a little more to say, you know what, we're doing something that matters. As I slowly hide my plastic period <laughs> bottle beneath. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm yeah, glad. I was going to say, I have shame on well, me. Tell, tell the folks at home a little bit about bioaccumulation because I think most people don't know about it. So bioaccumulation is when the chemicals from the plastic you know, right. reside in your body, right? right? Wow. So yeah, plastic in general, and depending on the grade of plastic, because there's many, many different kinds, right. and I am no in no way saying I'm an expert on plastic. <laughs> However, there are a little lot of different types of it and kind of the thinner the plastic is or if it doesn't have color, the sun can heat it and leach those chemicals into the water. And I mean, they're deadly chemicals that we should not be ingesting. So that's a big problem with plastic and why you've seen this resurgence of glass bottles in general mm -hmm. um, that are available for, for reusable water bottles. So it's a, it's, it's a big deal. You know, some people will be like, oh, you know, I just keep a, bo a plastic bottle of water in my car at all times. Ooh, that's not very healthy, actually. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, and I've been seeing the resurgence of like boxed water, and I'm sure that's mm -hmm. kind of the same idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and yeah. the resources for box, if you think about it in that way, when you're using glass, it's really heavy. So it's not just the material itself, but it's actually shipping this material. Oh wow. So when you're shipping something, or trucks are driving across the country with glass, that's very heavy. It's going to cost more money to do that. Now with your box, like you mentioned, that can be flat and shipped in flat rolls mm. of material of the box and then it's put together at the factory so the shipping costs are a lot less that means less fossil fuels fuels used wow. to go across country so there's a lot of different components to trying to have a minimal carbon footprint wow you know there's a lot to think about <laughs> i know i'm just like astounded by like how much you know and do like i feel like i like only watch reruns of like full house and like you really, like no i'm just because you're not only an eco entrepreneur but also a host and yeah no it's incredible and i mean you you work in so many different areas but it's a, it's almost like there's an area of dichotomy for you because you work in uh the car industry in a way as yeah. well so like when you you're working on your show it garage squad is there is there something that like you can do to like help lessen your carbon footprint there or do you like try to encourage them to use hybrid cars or? <laughs> uh, that's a very good question yeah. and it's something that i think about every season that we're filming right um, because you know there, there is a dichotomy there for mm -hmm. sure, and we're working on classic cars that use fuel. We're not working on green cars, and I joke and I say, "Hey, the next, the next season's going to be Garage Squad <laughs> goes green." Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, you should yeah, spin right? off yeah. and make it heavily female because I know this show is heavily male, right. which I want to ask you about as well. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. So I think that that could be fun, but I think honestly, just. Um, having influence on the people that I'm around there and mm -hmm. just being living by example um, with yeah. different things like you know I brought out some like fresh um, buffalo mozzarella cheese mm -hmm. for lunch one time and some of the guys looked at me and they're like what is that stuff <laughs> I'm like it's really? mozzarella cheese, guys. Come on, like, get on the here. <laughs> but just, you know, it, and it's, it was an organic one, and it did look different than what right. they were used to, so it was kind of funny to me. But just, you know, just through the simple things of just living my life and, and, and sharing some of the knowledge that I have, and they share too, so it, it goes both ways, you know. Right. But definitely it's something that I consider. Um, you know, we re obviously recycle the oil and the things that we take out of there, but there is something that does work in accordance with my values and that's the craftsmanship and the quality mm -hmm. value because when you think about organic and you think about um, being eco-friendly in some ways you're also saying hey we care enough about the quality of things um, to really put our energy and our passion into that and that does transfer into the car world right you know, because that's what classic cars are all about that craftsmanship that caring that went into uh, you know the knowledge of the production that went into hand making the curves yeah. of that line of the body of the car and that's lost today in, in in the huge manufacturing of cars that we do today. So in some ways it does parallel, even though there is a good, a big dichotomy, like and you said. you're recycling the cars. And right. We are. Yeah, yes. you've kept these cars around a lot. And most, you know, especially people here in LA, a lot of them get rid of their cars every two, three years. Right. These cars have been around for decades. So 
in a way, you are just staying right in line with your values and what you believe Absolutely. in. Absolutely. They're not going to the junkyard. Mm -hmm. They're being driven again, and we're keeping them going, and we're reusing. Right. <laughs> exactly. No, and there's something to be said yes. for that. I remember learning in my sociology class, you know, one thing about Americans is we're constantly trying to get newer and better mm -hmm. all the time. And so by using one of those classic cars, you're actually reducing. So Absolutely. that's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's also amazing what you guys actually do on the show. I got to check out an episode. I had a lot of fun. For those of you who don't know, it's definitely worth watching. I'm sure most of the fans who are tuning in have already seen it, but it's great. It's kind of like um, a modernized Pimp My Ride a little bit. I don't know if you've gotten yes, that before. Yes, but more realistic. Yeah, much more realistic. Right. It's much more down to earth and more grounded because um, it airs on um, Velocity Network. Right, right. Um, and it is amazing what you guys are able to do with these cars. I'm um, amazed myself sometimes because it, it is real in the fact that we don't know if we're going to be able to finish the car. I right. Mean, we have a limited amount of time. We have to finish the episode, and we are trying every time to make sure that we can get this car up and running. But, I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong and do go wrong and things that we just is impossible to anticipate. Right. So uh, there is this uh, feeling of, oh, no, uh, are we going to be able to do this? And we really hope so. Some of those car shows have endless time or they have, like, a... A warehouse that is just air conditioned and amazing. <laughs> I wonder what that feels like. <laughs> it's a little warm, isn't it? <laughs> it is warm. I mean, LA guys, we're in Hollywood. If I would have known this, I would have worn a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we would have got a lot of views. I know. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> we'll do it in the nude. Uh, <laughs> She's committing to that, not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun, you know? You, you can be more vulnerable. Yeah. Once you're naked, what do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose. That's just true. Hanging all out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but speaking of nakedness, like I said, you're not that this this was a weird transition, but we're going to set that aside. You're the only female in the group of hosts on this show, right? Yes. So do you feel like that's a benefit or drawback? And um, do you wish there was another female there? That's an interesting question. And um, just for viewers, I'm not naked on the show, just in case <laughs> I got transferred in any way in that direction. Um, but yeah, I am the only female host on there. And... It's fun because mm -hmm. I offer a different perspective, you know. Right. And as we know, you know, male and females are just wired differently. That's that's how we are, and it mm -hmm. complements each other. And so I think that it's fun to have the dynamic of, hey, I'm the female. I kind of bring this can-do attitude. Um, I think of it as an opportunity to be a good role model um, for young women out there because it's like, you know what? Some, there's a lot of stereotypes that exist or they want to label us a certain, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a blonde girl, kind of small, like, okay, what well, can she get in there and do things? Yeah, I can get in there and do things. You and know? you do on this show. Yes, you're I do. You're in there, you're digging into the cars. Were you like a grease monkey before this show? Or? I wasn't a grease monkey, but I was always <laughs> able to just say. get yeah. dirty. You know, Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like specifically about cars, but yeah. just... Growing up in Montana, and specifically, um, you know, it's it's you're in the Wild West. You're right. in nature. You yeah. know, I mean, you can't really be a wimp in any way. You can't be afraid to do things. I mean, for fun, you're in nature. You're rafting down the river, or like on mm -hmm. big blown up tires going down the river, and it's very really? yeah. That it's, sounds awesome. Yeah, and you're just growing <laughs> wow. up. You know, we had 16 acres, had horses, and all the stuff. And my dad was very into remodeling things. He had cars and he had bikes too, motorcycles, nice, um, and garage full of those because you can have space in Montana to have those things and to work on your hobbies. But you know, as kids, and and maybe I'll feel this way when I have kids, you got to put them to work. Yeah. So I was I was put to work a lot on a lot of his hobbies, nice. which was great. You know, as a kid, I didn't love it. I'm like. Oh God, we gotta work on the house now. I gotta get, you know, some of the parts were fun, like getting up on the roof with the shingling and stuff like that, just because I love heights. But some of it, you know, it's just about getting dirty and 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 be not being afraid of hard work. And right. I think that that was an important thing that I carried with me into this show. It's like, you guys want me to get under the car? All right, let's get under the car. Let's do whatever we need to do to get this done. Yeah. Do you find that I used to do auto shows? Okay, so you I was did. a product okay. specialist for them, and I would have guys who would come up to me and clearly just wanted to challenge me because I was a woman standing next to a car. Right. Do you ever encounter that in this world? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, guys always want to kind of put you to the test, and I mm -hmm. and I think the guys that I work with, even on the show, put me to the test sometimes. You know, they're like, "Oh, we're, none of us are doing this, Heather. It's for you to just see if I'm going to wimp out or." or get sheepish about something. Um, and that's why I think that it's it's important to be able to be strong and use that work ethic and say, you know what, I'm strong about this. But also at the same time, I'm not claiming that I know every single thing about cars. Right. So, you know, I mean, that's that would take many, many, many years of working every day on cars. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm very real about like, hey, I'm always still learning. 
I'm learning right. from the guys at all times. So you can challenge me and you can kind of want to put me down. But what you're going to realize is I can handle the banter. <laughs> I can banter back with you. Right. And it's all good. Like, it's okay. We have something to learn from each other, you know? Very true. That's a great way to come at it with humility because I think sometimes when I was put in that situation, I would just get my back up and be like, well, you know, it's a 2.4 <laughs> right. liter engine and four cylinders, you know. But right. I, it's a better right. way to look at it. And I think that... that creates a dialogue, you know? And right. then even if someone was being a little disrespectful, not to say they are, but you could say, well, you know, I, I don't know everything about that, but why don't you teach me? I'm, I'm open to hearing from you. Right, or and curiosity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. I, I think that if we, if we decide we know it all, then we lose some of the curiosity that's exciting about things, mm -hmm. you know? And I would think that curiosity would be a huge thing that's really fueled your entire career because your interests are so eclectic. Absolutely. It's a, yeah, it's a good piece of advice for all of us. Just be mm -hmm. curious because the, the opportunities that can present themselves when you are are kind of endless, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. we don't know how much time we have here to be curious in this world, so why not just, you know, grab it by the balls and be curious about everything we do? And that's Absolutely. kind of how I approach life. Awesome. You've traveled so much. I, I watched a video online where I think you were applying to be a host for a travel show. Oh, yes, I don't yes. know if that ever came to fruition. I, I made it very uh, to, to one of the, the final rounds, which was very exciting. But that was, I think, about five years ago or so. Oh, really? so yeah. You look exactly the same. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what would be your dream job with traveling? Oh, you know, I, I think it would be to highlight um, places that are being um, evolved and aware of climate change, of, of things that are doing innovative technologies or implementing things as a society, mm, wow. as a country or as a city or as a county, you know, it doesn't matter, but as a community of some sort that are doing things on the cutting edge of, hey, you know, we're going to be more aware whether the rest of the world doesn't like it or not. Here's how we're doing that. You know, more of an extreme green type of thing. Like here's here's different places you you haven't really known that are on the cutting edge of of technology in the green sphere. And I think that would be a really exciting thing because I love traveling and seeing new things and understanding their culture. And usually new ideas come from your culture or what you mm -hmm. need from that, right? If you're in the wine industry, you're gonna create new ideas based on how you can produce the best wine. Um, and a lot of that comes means that you're going to be eco-friendly in that way because it's going to create the best flavor. Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of technology and, and thinking about being more aware comes from the culture so you can get to really understand the culture of that place and then really what they're doing and be inspired by it. Because I think people really just want to be inspired by things. You know, we go about our daily life and if you have a regular job, it's like, okay, you know. And even every day getting up to do the same thing if it's not regular, just for a couple weeks, you're like, oh, what am I doing? You know, yeah, we want right. to be inspired by things and people who have new ideas. So I think I'd want to um, have a travel show that explored that a little bit more. I love that. I love that too. Like I'm like, where's Vice? Like I would definitely <laughs> watch this show. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you feel what countries or places even within our country do you feel are doing a great job with being green and reducing their carbon footprint? Well, um, you know, I was just up in Mendocino County mm. over the weekend, um, and I went to visit the first biodynamic and organic winery, Fry Winery, five vineyards up there um, in America, first biodynamic and organic winery in America, which was really interesting to me. And what I learned from that being up in that area is the whole county is GMO free. <gasps> Yeah. Dreams. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it was inspiring because it's possible. It's possible to band together and, and decide that, you know what, no, we're going to decide that the corporations can't take over this particular area. Wow. So how do they man that? Like, how do they, um, you know, fight the GMOs? You know, <laughs> I'm they... not exactly sure on how they came about to do that, to be That's honest so with cool. you, because I was there focused um, on learning about biodynamics and learning about the winery right. and how they became pioneers of something that a lot of people have followed. But to be the first is so interesting and and to be in that area so that's why that area came to mind when you asked like what area is specifically kind of more evolved it seems to be that's something so cool. up there so it's mendocino county mm -hmm. and do you know with their gmos how they don't have any gmos or is that even in their grocery stores like they won't ca carry a brand if it's got gmos in it or is it just yeah. the food they produce you know i'm not 100 percent certain forgive me on that i know oh, okay. we'll that they have a lot of farming up there. I mean, okay. they have wineries, they have farms, they grow a lot. And, you know, everything in the area when we were there we went to the co-op and it's like, oh, this was the carrots for for the juice are grown at this farm and the apples are grown here. And they just really have pride in the local small farms. Wow. And I think that that's really important because food, we have to have food. And if we sell all of our food to big agriculture, we're screwed. <laughs> well, I will say, consequently, or consequentially, my favorite 
restaurant in Los Angeles is Mendocino Farms here. I don't know oh, if you knew. Oh, right. Yes, There's yes. The, and it's, I do, uh, yes. I believe that all their food is shipped from Mendocino County. So that I think it abides by yeah. all the same. It's all like organic soda. Mm-hmm. and I don't Really? Know even, and they yeah. have really good sandwiches and all different types. Mm. And yeah. yeah. I, mean, I guess I'm plugging Mendocino Farms right now. <laughs> if you're an LA native, I would highly recommend Give it. us your sponsorship. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and your food. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good lunch spot. It it's really a really is. good lunch spot. Yeah, yeah definitely. So I'm assuming you're not a fan of Monsanto. No. No. No, no, I'm not a fan. I am the opposite of a fan. <laughs> Do you think we have a chance of taking them down? Um, I don't want to say no because I think that we need to maintain hope and because as soon as we decide that we can't do something or we get that mindset, um, we are defeated and it's all about our mindset. And I think that it takes education of each other, being willing to have dialogue about yeah. things and not being afraid of controversy or just wanting to get controversial about stuff that doesn't really make a difference. Mm. Um, right. But being willing to have the hard discussions that say, okay, this is an issue. And going beyond just the doom and gloom of the issue, but towards the solution. You know, there's a lot of documentaries out there that I'm like, oh my God, I want to cry now after I just watching this. But I didn't really feel inspired with a solution to, yeah. mm-hmm. to after that. Okay, I realize everything is like, going to hell right now but now what do we do and I think that continuing that discussion into now what what's the solutions how can we go I think that our the generations that are coming up after us are is already kind of naturally ingrained to them to be questioning even more Mm -hmm. it seems that we have continuing to question okay well wait a second is this what we want but I think the biggest part to combating that is being informed reading the small print in a lot of the proposition and bills that go in because the general concept sounds great but then when you read the small print you realize that they're taking away all of our rights and we're not going to be able to do anything about it and I think that that's really really important especially as the election's coming up absolutely here's something I think about and I want to get your take on it do you think the CEO or whoever's running Monsanto eats Monsanto made foods knowing Mm. what they probably know You know, I do wonder this because I thought I, I thought I heard something about or saw something, you know, social media, you see it for a, a fleeting minute and you're right. like, oh, I kind of remember seeing something about saying he didn't want to drink his own something that was food. I can't remember what it was. Probably like diet soda or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that unless they specifically try not to, it's hard not to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have to go out of my way to not eat the food that they make. Yeah. And, and you have to make a, everything. You have to make a conscious effort and be like, okay, well, I'm going to go to this grocery store and I'm going to read the back of every single product I buy, if it if it's a box product, even if it's crackers or whatnot, to make sure that it that it was produced ethically, that it was produced without GMOs, that the company cares. Like, I mean, there's so much, and and the problem is is that a lot of those small companies that we've grown to trust got have gotten bought by the bigger companies that mm-hmm. don't because they're like, oh, organic seems popular. So <laughs> we were buy some of these organic companies. <laughs> and then... And as a small guy and as a business owner, I actually do understand the mm-hmm. benefit of like, you're like, well, do I want to work this hard forever? Right. Or do I want right. to sell out to somebody? That was the point of building the company. So I, I don't really know exactly how we combat that, but I think that making sure that we can always keep the small businesses running is really important because as soon as, as small businesses give up, then Monsanto, it's Monsanto all the way. Right, and maybe be, the small businesses become the next Monsanto. Like, How great would it be if your company becomes one of those flagship brands, right. and then more companies like that follow suit, and then we have all these good guys sitting at the top. Yeah, you know? I think it's. I, I think when you say all the good guys, that's a good point, because mm-hmm. I think it's about supporting each other as businesses mm-hmm. instead of taking out other businesses, right. which is what kind of Monsanto's MO is. Like, oh, you're a threat to us, we're gonna you know, plant some some GMO seeds on your farm and then sue you. Right. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> you're just like devastating, you know, people who've worked their whole life to live on a farm and do something, and that's right. just really sad. And and I think that, you know, as we, as we get more in touch with our moral and ethical ideas of business and just keep those in mind, it's not just about money and power, then we can make a difference and maybe we can keep Monsanto at bay a little bit. Mm-hmm. Other countries, denounce them they burn the seeds when they come there i know know? it's so strange what they allow (laughs) i love america i'm grateful to live here but i don't understand the fda because i don't understand how lead is allowed in our lipstick i don't understand how gmos are allowed in our food artificial colors like all these things that other countries have denounced and banned and found 
to be detrimental to human health. Yeah. Are, we're allowed to eat and wear. And it's money. so strange. Money is the reason. Yeah, you know, I know. Money, and it, it's, it's really sad that that's become, we made it up. Mm -hmm. But it's become right. more important right? than anything else. Isn't that weird that money's not real? Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it, it's that funny thing, too, where, like, we are a leading nation on some issues. And, mm -hmm. like, it's... But then you see nations that are socially regressive even still concerned about what they're putting in their bodies, even though mm -hmm. we're not. It's, it's they, really interesting. Yeah, because they still feel, like, a truth that kind of... It, it's not cerebral, but it's more heartfelt. Right. It's mm -hmm. like, mm, it's an ethical, moral issue for them. And even if they have no money, like Haiti burned Monsanto's seeds after the flood. Wow. Monsanto sent a bunch of seeds over to replant their farms after that big flood, and they burned the seeds instead, and they said, no, we don't We don't want these evil seeds. Wow. So, wow. And they have nothing. They have nothing yeah. there. I mean, they could use food. Right. But they said, this is not the, we don't want to destroy our entire land by planting these evil seeds. Let's get you a docu-series <laughs> on, like, this. I'm really, so, though. Yeah. No, and then, what, but the thing with yours could be that at the end, you say, and here's what you can and do about it. And here's what you right? can That's do. Your thing. Because absolutely. you're absolutely right. Those documentaries, like, I watched, not Food Inc., um, uh, one of the ones that told you to go vegan. Right. You know, they had all these go different vegan, documentaries. The <laughs> basically. I mean, it was basically that, yeah. if we had to give it a thesis statement. Mm -hmm. But they're very convincing. But at the end, you do feel just so depressed, and yeah. you don't know what to do with yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the missing component in these series that are being made. I agree. So you give the facts, and then at the end, and say, don't fret. Right. We've right. got a solution. Right. Don't stay up all night now that you watch this documentary. Are the three of us about to sell a show? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I, think so. I hope so. <laughs> yes, I'm down. I would. I could get yes. so down with that. Yeah. I think there needs to be more proactive Solution content. Oriented. I like that word, proactive. It's yeah. a very important word. We can talk all day long, but if we're not doing something, if we're not saying, okay, well, what can I do about this? and actually take some action, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just writing something about it, putting it on Facebook, mm -hmm. something really simple like that. Hey, everyone, be aware. This isn't what you think it is. Right. I mean, right. that's the start of it, at least. That's so true. Yeah. And you had said something earlier that sparked my mind into another topic. You, you were talking about Monsanto coming in and basically tearing down these smaller farmers. And it made me think about women in our industry and how we're often pit up against each other. And I want to see what your experiences have been there and um, and how you work to uplift women. You know, that's a really good question. I appreciate that because I think that it's easy to get on board with hating on other women in, in, in this competitive world. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the important thing is to remember uh, to remember is, and something that I tell myself daily because, you know, I, I want to be successful and I see other people are doing things, I'm like, oh, Oh wow, they 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 already have like twenty thousand Instagram followers. How'd they do that? Or you know, that's a silly thing, but you no, know, but, but it's still, true. Right, right. Yeah. And I have to remember, well, you know what? They did that because of their unique combination of what they bring to the table and because they're probably following their truth about what they want. And as long as we're understanding that there's room for everyone, mm -hmm. I think that that's really important because there's this idea that you know, oh, only one or two people can be doing anything when that's, I don't know where we got that, but it's kind hmm. of silly, right? I mean, there's right. room for everyone to be able to do things to express themselves, especially in the world we are today with all of the online media and everything that we have to get our voice out there. And we don't need to feel like just because someone else got their voice out there that we can't. Exactly. And I think that's a, a really important thing. And when I look to um, the women of Velocity, for instance, because there are only a few of them, so naturally I'm like, right. okay, well, when I first started with Velocity, I, I'm the new girl, you know, in the network in general. And right. I thought, you know, I wonder what these other girls are doing. Let me get on there and see what they're doing. And, and I... And as I was looking at them, I just reminded myself, cultivate an appreciation for hmm. what they're doing because they're setting the precedent for why you're here right now. Wow. And that's important. I love that. Yeah. In general, too, I think, like, if we have a mentality of like let's collaborate, yes. everyone advances. You know, Absolutely. if you have a if you have a mindset of like let's compete or like that's mine, no one it's there's not an opportunity for both of you to no, excel. No, so. it's so true, and I think yeah. that we're I, I see us as a society. It feels like we're kind of moving more towards collaboration rather than competition. Aside from this election, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I well maybe you know and maybe the big companies obviously who just want to take everyone down aren't thinking that way. Well, it, right? I will say yeah. it has been reassuring to watch so many on both party lines be like, this is a little crazy. Like I feel right. like for the first time, people are getting outside of their party and looking at the 
the candidates and saying like, oh, like we're voting for people, we're not voting for parties. So that has been something. There, yeah, there have been a couple good things about this madness. I think, it's, I think it has shaken it up and I think we did need it to be shook <laughs> yeah, up a little bit. I think so yeah. too. That's an optimistic way to look at it. Maybe it's hit yeah. ahead and from here we will be more collaborative yes. and, and work together no matter the party. Right. That's the hope. I mean, most <laughs> yeah. people don't think it's been working for a while too right. well, like the system right. in general. And I think that, you know, we're also, though, um, keeping the blinders on ourselves. Like, there's only two parties and these I are the know. two people and, and all of that kind of thing. So I think with social media, which is, is a new thing with this election is, as far as how com how far it's come now, <laughs> we have a lot of opportunity yeah. to get things out there, mm -hmm. you know, that we couldn't get out there in the previous, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, and Trump certainly takes every opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Seizes but, the day. Yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't, and, and because of that, we've gotten to, like, kind of, make fun of it more than we ever have yeah. before. And I think that, that it's kind of necessary for people to, to go over the threshold and be mm -hmm. like, this is ridiculous. Wait right. a second, what are we doing? Right. <laughs> this was in published somewhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about things like Ken Bone? You know, how he became... Mm -hmm. So he was this guy who asked a question. I think it was either at the second the or second third debate. debate. Okay. Yeah. And he wore a sweater and people got obsessed with him and made all these memes and he didn't ask me anything on Reddit. Our society has a way of making anyone famous, and yet it's so hard for, like I say, all you have to do in order to become famous is just get a screwed up looking dog. Like, then you can reach the top. But but then someone like, you know, us or you who are doing things, it's so much harder to work your way up if you don't just do something wild. Right. So what do you think of that whole phenomenon? Um, I think it's short lived. Yeah, you know, I think that you know we know these people for one quick second, and really the the star fades. You know, right. it's just like a little quick, like oh, they did something different. But I think what we're going to start to realize is do something different and something that matters because mm -hmm. it's people that are doing something different and getting known. It's like, well, well what is this for? You know, right. nothing, nothing good. And I think maybe we can learn from that. Okay, let's let's totally think out the box and do something different in a way that's benefiting society. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can turn that around. I think you've proven that too. I think, I believe in this industry, if you commit to work that you believe in and are proud of, you will find an audience. Yeah. You know, it might not be the 20 million people who bow down to like social media gurus right. and these people, but if you can work. But what are they really? I, I mean, know. some yeah. of those people literally just show their butt a lot. And it <laughs> is a great butt. I'm, I'm in awe. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to do that, I think it, it's more important to be authentic, right. like we were talking about right. earlier. And what are you getting out of just showing your butt a lot? I know. That's the thing. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've proved, though, that committing to work you believe in will yield results and the following. So, yeah, I think yeah. it's hard to do that in our society. Yes. I think it's hard to fully commit to something because everyone has an opinion telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing. A lot of opinions. Yeah. Lot of <laughs> How do you and there's deal a lot of distractions that? out there, too. And, and there's life has a lot to offer in general. Yeah. So it's like it's hard to stay focused, and that's probably why. I have so many different things I'm doing because I get a different idea that excites me and I think, ooh, this speaks to a certain part of me that feels really good in a, in a moral and ethical way that I really want to pursue and or this seems really fun and travel and adventure that I really think will enrich my life or this. So it, it's balancing all of those things that speak to you in various ways, I mm. think. How do you do that? Do you focus on one at a time or do you have a bunch of plates spinning at once? Still figuring that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes I feel like I have a lot of plates um, spinning. I've been getting better at understanding how to schedule time and say, okay, I need quiet time. And if I'm going to write some things, then I need to turn the phone off and not right. be able to have people or finding when times do. Really the best time for me to write blogs or anything is in the morning yeah. when people mm. haven't really bothered me yet and my mind isn't spinning with like a thousand other things. So just kind of figuring out like, when I can most focus on the different aspects of things. Um, but I think it's tough in general because things constantly are pulling on my energy and attention. Ooh. And attention, and I have to. Uh, nice catch. I didn't that get, was great. Got re She's also a there. superhero. <laughs> For those people who are listening, we almost had a water spillage moment, but she very gracefully that stopped. Was very it. impressed. I would not have. So. <laughs> I do have good reaction time. I yeah, guess that's a skill. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's one thing you always keep spinning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think it's just about kind of checking in constantly with myself hmm. and being like, well, what's important? Ha have my priorities changed? Mm. based on what I've learned this week. Have my priority changed? Is this still important to me? Just because I made it a goal because I'm kind of a stubborn person who when I decide on something, 
I'm going to do it. I'm mm-hmm. going to see it through. That's why I'm still in L.A. after 12 years, right? So. <laughs> right. I feel you. Yeah. How do you feel about L.A. in general? You know, sometimes I am in such in love with the city. I'm like, this is the best city ever. I can eat wherever I want. I can just go and do a million things. And sometimes when I'm driving down the road, I'm cursing right. at everyone, and I am pissed. <laughs> sometimes you love L.A., and then sometimes you have to take the 101. Right. And then you want to kill yourself. <laughs> or you just get behind, like, bad driver after bad driver. Oh, that I, just, I have. I get road rage. It's, it's a weak I do. Yeah. I get in my car. It's automatic. I don't even notice it, you know? Until think, other people sitting next to me as a passenger is like, what is happening? I'm like, oh, this is just how I drive. I do too. <laughs> Here's my theory, though. I think people that get road rage, it's their one outlet where they can, like, release pent up stuff. Yeah. So if you're going to do that in the car when it's just you, no one hears me. It's the best place yeah. to do it. Yeah. That's what Sometimes I, say. I wish I had a loudspeaker, though. So <laughs> me I could, too. I, I talk to people most. I'm like, yeah. sir, you didn't have to do that. Oh, I do sir. that too. If I'm in a good mood, I'm like, okay, so go ahead, sir. If that's fine. Right. Mm-hmm. I talk to them the whole time. I also wish I had different horns. Yeah. That meant I've different always things. thought that too. Yes. A hello horn. Yeah. Or uh, dick. Right. Or a dick horn. <laughs> dick horn. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. It does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I agree with you. I, I think that we need to have more ways to communicate with our fellow drivers yeah. than just horn or finger or peace sign. I give peace sign. When right. people give me the finger, I give them the peace sign. I nice. do a lot of waving. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, <laughs> see? Good. But that people will let you in if you yeah. give them the wave. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I, I look at them and I go, can I come in? Yeah, can me I too. Oh, I do that same thing. And it yeah. always works pretty much. And you should buy a real dick. Yeah. You gotta give them a dick horn. The dick horn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you do that or then you need that horn move. Yeah. yeah. Well, coming from a small town, if you don't wave to people, like, you are so rude. No. <laughs> you know, I mean, you wave to everyone when you go by. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi, you're basically you don't know a serial killer in my book if you don't give me the wave and I let you in. <laughs> yeah. Right? Noted. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I know. That's so rude. It's when so you let rude. them in and yeah. then they just act like they didn't even see you. Yeah. You go out of your way, you stop, you make eye contact, and come on in. No way. Yeah. Who raised you, sir? <laughs> or ma'am? You did not deserve to be let in. Yeah, I do. I say that out loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but so it all ties back to cars, really. It is does. What we're learning. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, do you, we, do, we just spend a lot of time in our cars in LA. So oh it does. my gosh. Yeah. Absolutely. Our whole lives. It's it, basically like our second home. Yeah. But won't it be so cool when automated cars are here and we don't have to drive them anymore? We're How not much that work far. can you get done? I know. I know. We're right. not that far. No, we're not. Yeah. I actually heard on um, uh, NPR. Fresh Air. Yeah. Was that, that the one? It was 2085. Yeah. That the entire now that sounds far away, but this is means the entire city of LA will be self driving. No cars. No one needs to drive any cars in LA. Yeah. That is crazy. Do you think that people will? Like evolve to be less intelligent because of all this. I ease. wonder this. Well, at least less adept at driving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if people are using that time, I feel like with any technology, oh, you could use that time to study. Right. Like How much any, can you get done in the car? I know, especially so in LA. And I think with any technology, some people will use it for good, and some people use it for That's bad. That's very I've always true. Felt that way. That's so. very true. I mean, for me, I could get a lot done in the car on my hour if I need to go to Santa Monica for something, and an yeah. hour back. That's two extra hours of my life yeah. that I can. Even so just true. send simple texts or catch up on social media yeah. stuff. I mean, even just simple things that people are doing right now while they're driving and causing accidents. Yes. Right. I never do that. <laughs> uh, me neither. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Yes. Speaking of social media, do you have a specific vision about your social media? Do you create campaigns or is it kind of just whatever you're feeling in the moment? Social media has evolved for me um, in the way that at first I was kind of afraid of it because it felt, I felt vulnerable being on it. Like, what do I, okay, I just like post like, I'm wearing mm-hmm. a life and world and what do I, what do I say to everyone? I feel do that they way care too. about me? Like, I don't know. I feel that way too, so I'm curious to see what you think now. Yeah, well, I've just decided to say, screw it, I'm mm-hmm. gonna post stuff that I care about right. and then either they like it or they don't like it and it doesn't really matter. So that's how the approach that I now use instead of like worrying about it, which I took a long time to join Facebook because of that, you oh, know, yeah. and I was like, I don't know. I do. I, I feel comfortable. Not really. But I just decided I need to get over it because it's part of the world that I chose as well. As far as right. being a TV host and an actor, that's an important part is being available and, and posting things that matter. And some people do care about it. And it's it's been fun to kind of see some influence um, that I've had on people with I do recipes and they'll say, wow, I had no idea about that. And it's like, okay, well, cool. This does work for some good stuff. So I just take the approach that if I'm interested in it, when I was up at Fry Winery, I posted some cool things from there. And, you know, I have a lot of fans that are our car guys that may not care about organic wine, but oh, well, (laughs) I'm going to post it anyway. So I I, I just feel like I just kind of go with what's me. Do you ever get any haters? 
there's always haters in the world, aren't there? But I don't have too many. I haven't had people be too um, too bad. A lot of people get mad because their car isn't chosen for the show. <laughs> And they're mad at me, which I have nothing to do. I have nothing to Misplaced do with choosing anger. the cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I don't have anything to do with that. And I'm really sorry your card didn't get chosen for whatever reason, but they they get mad at me. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird. Um, or they'll get mad because um, I didn't respond quick enough to a message or something. Oh and so they want to like, oh, you're just too busy. And it's like, well, I don't, I don't check my Facebook messages every day or I'd be in Facebook all the time. That's crazy. Right. right. You know, you have to set up boundaries. Boundaries are important. Yeah, especially yeah. with the public. Yeah. 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 And your mom. So, <laughs> <laughs> and your mom, right? That's like and a kitchen. That's like general. a kitchen yeah. sign. Live, laugh, love, and boundaries are important with the public and your mom. And your mom. That's that true. I think it's actually one of the hardest things to learn how to do is set boundaries. Parental boundaries. <laughs> Parental, but with your employers. In general. It is. Yeah, especially because I think as women, we feel like we can never say no mm -hmm. to opportunities because that idea of scarcity is in our head, unfortunately. Yes, yes. And it's not true. I don't believe it's true. But it has been historically true that there have been less opportunities for women. Mm -hmm. Right. So we feel like we can never say no. But it's important to say no sometimes if something doesn't feel right. And if it's not going to lead you to something that's congruent with who you are. Yeah. Some of the, I think that's a really important point. And I think even, I, I really practice the idea of saying, I'm not sure yet. Hmm. Because there's a lot of times where you know, people use that knowledge of the fact that we don't want to say no mm -hmm. and, and we'll, we'll kind of put you on the spot and mm -hmm. make you feel like you have to obligate yourself on that moment. And it's like, you don't actually have to obligate yourself at that moment. You're allowed to take a minute and think about it. And if you're not, if it, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a maybe, and that means I need to think about it for yeah. a second. That's a great no. Thank you. I will use that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Let me pause for a minute and get back to you. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Let me get back. And if they really want you to do whatever that is, then they're going to obviously they're gonna respect wait. that. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> now you have the power. Mm -hmm. That's right. Take back the night. Um, so you also are an actor. And we talked yeah. about the difference between actor and actress. We're going with actor. Right. I agree. I'm on board it's with you. It's not a directress. No. Hmm. Exactly. A writress. Actually, I'm pretty passionate. Executive producess. Right. Exactly. So why are we designating yeah. the female part of it that? It shouldn't be. I, I wish that it didn't exist in general. I I wish gendered words didn't exist. Like, I don't think it should be WNBA unless it's MNBA as well. Right, hmm. right. So, Why is it that then it's establishing that is the norm and this is the secondary yeah. to the Exactly. Norm. Yeah. Exactly. So I really respect that you've taken actor on. Um, what is your favorite thing you've done as an actor and what is your dream role? Oh, that's a lot of good questions always. Um, <laughs> you know, I've had some really good opportunities, and, and it was a while ago, but I had the opportunity to film in Mexico for over a month and live down there in the Yucatan Peninsula. And if um, the Yuc if you're not familiar with the Yucatan, you know, Mexico kind of comes down and the Yucatan Peninsula juts out into the Caribbean Ocean. So it's kind of out there with the other Caribbean islands. It's wow. not really the same type of um, ecology as the rest of Mexico. It's amazingly beautiful. It's one of my favorite places that I've ever been. And to be living there, for a month, for a job, just location-wise alone, and I got to jump and swim in the cenotes, and they're like these freshwater caves. Wow. And, and it was just such an amazing experience that that just tops it off just because of the experience itself, and I learned so much working on that film. Um, so that was one of my favorite experiences, and I just felt so lucky when I was there. I just was very appreciative of the fact that I had that opportunity. Um, I think that in the acting world, you know, I, I'm still navigating that. I, I've done a lot more hosting, and so I take the opportunities as they come as an actor. And, um, you know, I don't know what my dream job would be yet. I, I, I think that for me it's important to play strong woman, as mm -hmm. you know, continuing with the theme of what we're talking about. I think that speaks to who I am, and, it, and I think that, that whatever role comes my way, that that's kind of an important thing as far as a signature role, if I wanted that, per se. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I see that for you, and I think something that maybe flips the script in a way, you know, yeah. where you're playing a strong woman, but maybe with an unexpected twist, because you're very unexpected. You're beautiful. You're small, like you said, but you've got all of these different expertise areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so maybe something that even ties in uh, your, what would we call it, eco-entrepreneur, <laughs> entrepreneurship <laughs> yeah. right. into it. That might be cool, right. you know, right. a movie with a message. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, documentaries are interesting to me. Is what we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'd wow. love to do something in that realm. You know, speaking of travel, one question I wanted to ask you before we wrap was, um, what's a place that you've traveled? Um, like a maybe like underappreciated part of the globe because I love to travel as well yeah that you would recommend for travelers to check out 
I'm hesitant to recommend, yeah. <laughs> but also want to, just because part of my favorite places are places that are less traveled and haven't been overrun by tourism in general, because right. then you get oh, the so you don't true wanna... essence yeah. of the culture, because for me, that's that's part of it. I mean, for me, it's about understanding like really the essence of the culture of what happened and how that transforms me internally by being there and, mm -hmm. and taking that all in and having time to contemplate. So one of the places that I really, really fell in love with and think is underappreciated and under um, explored is Laos. Okay. Um, it's it's situated between Vietnam and Thailand, um, China to the north, and Cambodia below. So it's a landlocked country. Um, it's very small. It's a communist country, and um, they are such a beautiful people, and they're so nice. Uh, my brother actually lives there, so I had the opportunity to go there, and I'm, I want to go back. He just had a niece, and I re I haven't met her yet. She's almost Aww. two, and so um, I want to go back and again and see how, you know how much maybe has changed since I was there five years ago, um, but but. Just walking around there, I just felt completely, I felt just at peace because hmm. they didn't want anything from you. It wasn't like a lot of touristy places where they're, they're after you, you know, as, sure, you know, especially as an American. And a blonde, like, right, actress They're host. trying to actually get things from you because you're a Westerner who has something to offer, right. and it feels insincere in mm -hmm. that way. This doesn't, that's not the feeling that you're having when you're in love. Hmm. These people are really appreciative that you're there, and they're very happy and smiling, and just a happy chill amazing people and it's just so wonderful to visit and i had the opportunity to go down into the four thousand islands of the mekong river and the Re mekong river gets about eight miles wide down there wow and you take the small canoe that they paddle you into these bungalows on these islands in the mekong river and it is one of it's called lonely planet called it the laziest place on earth hmm. so i said i wanted to go there yeah. <laughs> and see what the laziest place on earth was like and it truly was time kind of stopped there wow. and it was just an amazing place and i think you know there's some expats who have settled down there and there was like a bakery that you know some people had settled down there and some people just never come back because it's just such an amazing place a bakery yeah like just yeah a bakery mm -hmm. and on a random island in the middle of the mekong river let's that go sounds great i can yeah let's i can go right now. Go for a donut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, after eating rice and veggies for like two weeks, and we saw cinnamon roll, I'm like, cinnamon roll! Yeah, oh my oh god, my give gosh. me this thing! I can eat like there, ten of them. Yeah. There's nothing better. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was GMO free, so at least yeah. you absolutely, that. Yeah. probably. I'm sure it was. <laughs> uh, well, you're a lovely person, Heather. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this bad boy up? I guess I would just say um, tomorrow night is our season three finale of Garage Squad. We have wow. two back-to-back -back episodes, so they're gonna be super fun, and I'm excited because, you know, that means another season down. I'm excited to, you know, start a season four next year. So is but it confirmed we have season four? Not confirmed, but I'm just very hopeful. Okay. We are too, we are too. Good vibes out there yes. for season four. Yeah, so, um, but but season three is, we did 13 episodes and the last two are happening tomorrow night. So I encourage people to tune in on Velocity at nine o'clock central time and um, check it out because it's really fun. We take one car to the drag strip and we've never done that before. Ooh. So it's totally different. Well, grease lightning for yes. you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So. And where can they find you on social media? Social media um, at Heather Storm LA on Twitter and Instagram and Heather Storm LA on Facebook. Makes it really simple. Perfect. Right. Yeah. We love that. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. You've been wonderful. It's really great. Absolutely. Talking. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah. If you guys want to find me online, you can do so at Jeffrey C. Graham. If you're interested, I'm also covering the FX show Atlanta with Donald Glover. You can catch that on tonight. It'll be on at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific tonight. So I'd uh, love to see you there. And uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Jeffrey C. Graham. And you can follow me at Lauren Lograsso, L-O-G-R-A-S-S-O. -S -S and I'm playing a show tomorrow night at Now Boarding in LA, 10 p.m. It's free. It's in West Hollywood. It's fun. Come on down. I'll see you there. And thank you again, Heather. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It was awesome. Have a great day. Where is it? Could be anywhere. <laughs> if you're in or those there doubles only, do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.